And now the build up to Australia Day, as we know, has been filled with controversy from councils cancelling citizenship ceremonies, 80 councils around the country, supermarkets like Woolies refusing to stock Australiana products, cricketers jumping on the woke change the date bandwagon. Although late today, uh, Cricket Australia has had a backflip, made some sort of a concession to ignoring the day at the Test match at the Gabba. But among all this, thousands of Aussies are still out there celebrating, proud of our beautiful country. And I guess, I would imagine, I guess, my next guest is no doubt one of them. Joining me is former Queensland Premier Campbell Newman. Great to see you again. Um, I'm no quitter, Campbell, and I know you're not either, but... This is just so frustrating. Every year this goes on, I just feel <laughs> yeah. like giving yeah. up and saying, get rid of the day. I mean, goodness me. Well, well, you, you sort of started with that, Steve, but then in your editorial, you, you sound like you weren't for quitting at all, mate. Uh, and, and I don't think we should, because I would say this to people who love Australia, who celebrate this day as my wife and I were a few hours ago with people in a, in a park in uh, the inner north of Brisbane, um, it's always darkest before dawn. We now know that 60% of Australians rejected uh, a constitution that divided us on race. And there was a poll around in the last week claiming 68, I think, percent of Australians wanted the day to stay the same. Um, you know, if these activists want to keep carrying on, that's their right. But I think Australians, um, you know, are very clear about what they want. You know, and by the way, the Prime Minister, you know, if he, <laughs> if he wants to hold a referendum at some stage, try this one on the day, on the date of Australia Day. Maybe that'll shut him up. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be game to do that because he knows the 60% who voted no in The Voice are going to exactly vote no about the day. Uh, yes, you're right. I'm, I'm riding both sides of the street, but, God, it gets frustrating. I mean, you're in beautiful Queensland. I'm in Melbourne, and Melbourne's the most left-wing capital city in the country, and the whole yep. city was jam-packed with tens of thousands of people, and for some reason, Free Palestine movement has managed to get itself involved yeah. in Australia Day protests... Uh, about Indigenous Australians. So what's that about? Well, that's totally perverse. I mean, the idea uh, that, uh, you, know, you know, Aboriginal people and, you know, their sort of uh, cause is being linked to that is is quite distasteful. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been a number of prominent, you know, right-thinking um, Aboriginal people who've made that point. Uh, it is just... It, it is a really slippery slope. And I don't think they then do themselves any favours um, because, you know, they're aligning themselves with people who've been protesting, essentially backing Hamas. And that's what's been going on clearly in Melbourne and, and Sydney. That, that's what we've seen quite, quite clearly. And I, I wouldn't want, if I was a, an Aboriginal person, to be, to be sort of locked in with those people. It's just, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Campbell, do we need more leadership on this? Do we need a Prime Minister or a Premier or, or somebody yeah, in senior do. in politics mm. to come out and, and tell us well, what they think here? Well, 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 we do. And, you know, we saw some leadership, albeit belatedly, from David Crisofoli in Queensland, who said that if he becomes the Premier, he will, you know, he will scotch this uh, truth-telling and treaty stuff, which, sadly, he voted with his colleagues on some months ago, but at least he finally has seen the light. Um, you know, we've seen the New South Wales Labor Premier uh, this week actually, you know, say that Australia Day it should be on that day, if, if, uh, if I've got that correct. I mean, you know, by the way, Minns continues to uh, positively surprise me in some of his moves. He, he gets it. And then we have the Prime Minister today, though, you know, waffling on about trying to bring us together. And, you know, he's done some very divisive things. I mean, the, the referendum was one. And another one, uh, contrary to all the spin, is what he's doing on this uh, t Stage 3 tax cuts and by, by breaking his commitment there. That is very divisive because it is pitting, you know, um, the less well-off in middle Australia against the su supposed rich. Middle Australia and lo the less well-paid received their tax cuts some years ago uh, other people were promised a tax cut by Scott Morrison and promised a tax cut by Anthony Albanese and Jim Chalmers, and now they've reneged on it. And that's the simple, brutal truth. Well, I think the word reneged is a, a bit tame. I mean, they lied. I mean, you've been at the top of politics. Can you survive 
lying like Anthony Albanese and Jim Chalmers did about those stage three tax cuts hundreds of times. But, and the, 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 the key to this mm, is yeah. during an election campaign. So they were convincing people to vote for yeah. them on the promise that you'd get your tax cut. And once yeah. elected, it gets chucked out the window. How, how does any politician survive that? Oh, I think I don't think they they will get away with it. Um, I think they're thinking that the politics is marvellous for them. I think they think it's finely calibrated to so that every child wins a prize. But I don't think they get away from the, the simple fact that they have lied about it, and that they will be remind you know the community will be reminded uh, about that by the coalition on and on and on. And yeah, you know, it was interesting before just seeing Albo use some words. Um, on an issue that was exactly the same as the words he's been using for the last two years, essentially, which is, I've got no plans. I've got no... That, you know, my, my position is, is is that I've got no plans. Well, what about negative gearing now? Uh, will, they, will they break their word on that? Capital gains tax, um, you know, 50% uh, discount on assets that have been over... Uh, held for over um, 12 months. What about... The, the capital gains tax exemption on the family home, family home. These are all things that he and Chalmers committed to, and frankly, we cannot believe any of that now. That 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 is what will come back to haunt them. So I think they've been. I think they think they've been smart. I think it's going to burn them in the long run.